Welcome back to Young Hollywood. Thanks, happy to be here. It has been a while. I've been busy. You have been busy. I've been busy, which is great, you know? Here's the funny thing. I saw the film last night, and obviously people who know the book and know the film and the premise of the film, there's a lot of black and white. Were, did you, were you here last night? Did you see the sunset in LA? Because I came out of the film and it was the most incredible sunset that is ever, I think I've ever seen in Los Angeles, which I oh, thought was man. like a sign or something that I was, I was receiving a sign in life. Right, when he's sailing and he discovers color. Yes. So what, I mean, you're an Aussie boy. You must have seen some pretty incredible sunsets in your life. I have. One of the most incredible sunsets I've ever received. I worked in Perth on a movie called Son of a Gun with Ewan McGregor. And I stayed in this beautiful apartment right on the beach in Fremantle. And so we would get these great sunsets. And these, like, there's ships on the horizon. So they would kind of, the sun would pierce through the ships. And you could watch the ball dropping. You could count the seconds. You know, you wouldn't want to take a sip of your wine because you'd miss the sunset. I want to know what it was like watching a sunset with Ian McGregor. Oh, it was cool. It was really cool. I mean, he's, he's kind of the man. A, he's such a cool guy. Right. You know, great actor, really cool guy. Um, I had the best time working with him. Did you ride motorcycles with him? He's good, you know. He's good, yeah. He's, he's pretty good, isn't he? Did he take you on one? He didn't, no. Um, let's talk about this movie. Rode mo motorcycles on this movie. You did ride motorcycles on this one. Um, first of all, had you seen, had you actually seen snow before? Because you are an Aussie boy. My first snow experience was when I was in 12th grade and we went on a trip to New Zealand and um, we went snow, it was like a snowboarding school trip and I guess that was the first time I saw snow, but it was actually ice. And so we got out of the bus and we were really excited um, and we just started throwing this like dirty ice at each other because we were so excited to see snow, you know. But the next day we snowboarded on powder and it was great. Can I just tell you that the premise of this movie, I'm not so opposed to the idea of having my life controlled and having Meryl Streep just appear and like make my decisions for me. I don't think it's such a bad thing. What I'm about to tell you, you must never repeat to anyone. I don't believe Jonas is lost. With the ceremony of loss. A charade. I don't expect you to understand, but you must know that Jonas has become dangerous. Do you, are you one of those people that's good at taking advice? Are you better at giving advice or receiving advice, do you think? I'm better at receiving advice. I'm, I don't think that I have enough knowledge to be passing on advice. You're yet. very young. I'm very young. Um, so I like observing and taking in the knowledge. So later on, maybe I can pass that on. And what about making decisions? Are you a good decision maker? I'm the worst decision maker really? ever, yes. In what sense? I kind of, uh, I just don't think about the consequences in life. Like I just roll with something and I just try and keep everything like fun and light and happy. But later on down the line, I always get like, ah, oh, shit, like I shouldn't have done that. Or like, well, you know. What do you think? best decision you ever made was? This movie. Taking this movie. It was kind of a no-brainer though, right? Was there a decision actually to be made? Or or I guess you did, you thought about it, didn't you? Because of the aging down and the whole, you know. Yeah, I mean, I read the first script and the character was so young, I thought like, it, you know, am I being had by my agent? What's going on? Um, he was how old, 12? He was 12 years old, yeah. you know, and I was 24 last year when I read the script. And so that's, it was, I'm double the age of the character, and I'm sure people have somewhere, someone has done that somewhere in Hollywood. Um, but it just didn't feel right, and I read the book, and there's so much... I, I found like a, a better connection with the character. And, yeah. You know, he's graduating from high school and becoming um, someone who works for the rest of their, li their life. He's assigned um, a job for the rest of his life. And that's like high school to being an adult. Right. So like when didn't this, pro this project, project has been around for a long time. You were four years old when they were, they were first talking about it? <laughs> uh, I was four years old, yeah. So they said, Brenton, we're going to watch you grow up for the next 20 years and we want you to play Jonas. <laughs> what, what if somebody had actually said that to you? Predicted your future ahead of time and told you what you were going to be doing? I don't know, I think my sister was too busy dressing me in her clothes at four years old. Okay, now we got to talk about that. In her clothes? Yeah, she would dress me up in these like elaborate outfits. Pretty cool. I mean, that's maybe when I started acting when I was four years wow, old. Wow, there you go. You like dressing up in costume, Wait, and you have your sister to thank for your for your I career. I do. Yeah, I do. Um, did I hear something about you and Jeff Bridges were jamming? On there was a little bit of jamming going on on set. There was more Vegemite, but yeah, we did play. Um, there was more what? There was more Vegemite than jam on set. Really? But we did play a lot between takes and between fun. scenes. Um, <laughs> 
you know, it's a great way to, you know, relax and a guitar is something I carry with me everywhere. Yeah. And Jeff too. Taylor Swift joined us a little bit and we kind of would play a little bit. Not enough though, we didn't really, I wish we played more. So the two of them play together? That's so sweet. Yeah. I think the next movie we all do has to be a, a, a movie where we all play music together. Okay, but you bring your guitar everywhere. It's like a, it's like a baby, I have to take it everywhere. Speaking of babies. You gave me a great segue. Oh, okay, good. Cool. Well, speaking <laughs> no, of babies, speaking of babies, what? <laughs> yeah, I worked with a baby for six, you know, five months. So you must be snow, good with them at this desert. point. Was it really? Was it actually really? Yeah, we took those ba those babies, uh, came with us to twins, James and Alex. And they came with us to the desert. And they came with us to the snow. And they went on, you know, as much of a journey as we did. Fiona, we gotta go now. You, me, and Gabe. Joe, does what about my family, you and the other new children? I can't leave them. This is the only way. This is the only way to make everything okay. Wow. You could, you wouldn't want to drop. Them. I mean, so they were. They you wouldn't were, want to drop them. No. Now. Are you are you better with kids now? Like, do you feel like you have like a good training ground for one day? That was the best training. I think <laughs> it was like the SAS training. Really? How to handle a baby? Yeah. Um, it was great. What do you think? I mean, obviously, everybody's asking you about just working with Meryl Streep and and Jeff Bridges, but since this is a film about memories, do you have a best memory of a moment on set that you'll sort of take forever? Yeah, what were you we just talking about? The jamming, the, the music. Just sort of behind. The music that we all would play on set was so freeing and it created such a, like, a sense of happiness and joy in our work. And also, I mean, on set though, when you're looking, you know, at Meryl or you're looking at Jeff and you're in a scene, do you ever catch yourself going, all the time. Yeah. You know, and that's, uh, yeah, all the time. I mean, I remember thinking stupid little things like, you know, I had worked on the movie for four months and I was so relaxed and, you know, you think you're doing well or you, or not so well or whatever. But I remember thinking things like, my left foot is too far to the left right now. It's going to put Meryl off. What am I going to do? Okay, I'm going to move it slightly so she can't see, but so it's going to be there. And there it is. Oh, she saw it. <laughs> like your mind is, you know, snowballs. <laughs> but I don't know, I guess you learn to just ignore that and just try and be in the moment. Didn't you say that Meryl, I think you said that Meryl, she's just really quick at getting in and out of character. It's just one of those. Yeah, I mean, she had a, she had some hard cards because she came in, um, you know, later on in the story and she only had a certain amount of time to shoot all of her scenes. And so it wasn't, um, it wasn't as, I guess it, the process wasn't as playful for, for yeah. her. And she had to be, you know, it's like a one one take, two take, three take, we've got to move on, you know, so she kind of nailed it every time. Um, I didn't even realize you could tell Meryl she only had one or two takes. I thought it was just one of those things. You just roll the camera and you just let her do, you know. Oh, I think Philip Noyce is the captain. What he says goes. Right. You know, right. so um, that was just the way we shot. I mean, that we had to, every movie has time constraints and that was one of ours. Well, I'm so happy for you. Thank you so much. When you came in a couple years ago, I said he is going to do huge things and I wish I put money on in Vegas on it because you're doing so many. You can put money now on it. I you could. I mean, your stock's that. gone up a little, you know, but you know, I'm still, I could still get in there and make some money off it. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for coming in. Make sure in. I'm involved in that, okay? I'll give you a cut. Okay, okay. 10%? It sounds good, yeah. It sounds good.